Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 5th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Washington, Oregon off to the right here. You can kind of see we've got some clouds here out across the Gulf of Alaska, but we are going to be starting to warm things up a little bit here as we go through the early portion of next week. And then we've got another system coming through Western Canada. How far will that intrude down in towards Washington and Oregon, and what can we expect? We'll take a look at that as we go through the video here this morning. So take a look at where we are right Right now, and if we back up towards the yesterday, you'll see we had the thunderstorm activity here across portions of Oregon, Idaho. You can kind of see the low pressure system moving up and across the region, and you can kind of see it right now. Still some wraparound moisture associated with this cloud activity right here. And if you look across some of the Willamette Valley, they're not too bad. Some of the Oregon coast getting some sunshine. Same thing with the Washington coast, kind of hit and miss there. Looks like a story is kind of socked in, but there is some of that marine layer made its way in towards western Washington here this morning as well. Now, taking a look here, this is what we're going to be looking at as we go through the summer months. This is vertically integrated smoke. So this is the high resolution rapid refresh. It goes out 48 hours every six hours. So there's the 12Z run. And you can see we've got some of this activity here that flares up during the afternoon hours across Northern California and across portions of Washington and British Columbia here as we go through Sunday afternoon. So we'll be watching that to see how much smoke we have around and where the fires are. And uh, yeah, we'll keep uh, ourselves updated on this. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see kind of an interesting thing and not a lot of smoke around but there are some fires starting here across ports of California and Washington and British Columbia kind of typical for this time of year you can see that's the Pomos fire there across uh you know just off to the uh, west there of Lake Chelan that's the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest there are some other fires out there as well not producing tons of smoke yet but you can see Grizzly Flat fire there's Black Canyon fire across portions of Oregon as well now, taking a look here at the European model. So uh, Pacific Northwest off to the right, obviously, there is the Gulf of Alaska. So uh, again, uh, since we went through the 4th of July here, we're going to be building this ridge as we go through next week and kind of see that protective boundary here across the Pacific Northwest. But you can also see this a fairly strong storm system for this time of year moving in across southeast Alaska. It's going to knock down our heights. It's going to bring a frontal system across western Canada. And some of that's going to try to push down into Washington State. We'll take a look at that in some more detail here in a moment but that's also going to cool us off but then in the wake of that we start to build another ridge here it's kind of typical summertime stuff here for the pacific northwest we'll watch this over the next few days and just see how strong this next ridge is going to be as we start to head in through the june or sorry the july 9th 10th and 11th time frame now taking a look at six hour precipitation type. So we get this uh, activity here that I showed you on uh, the visible satellite this morning and we put that into a motion there and you can see this next system starting to push in here as we go on into the day Monday, Monday night on into Tuesday. You can see some pretty good precipitation amounts Vancouver Island north up towards southeast Alaska, Haida Gwaii there or the Queen Charlotte Islands. You put that into motion and you can see the frontal system start to make some headway towards southwest British Columbia and Washington State. But you see it's losing its punch as it does so. And this is as we go through the day Wednesday, but this will also drop those temperatures and suppress those for a couple days as well. And you can see some convergence zone activity here maybe as we go on in through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But then again, we start to dry out after that another ridge building in here. And again, that storm track pointed up towards southeast Alaska. Now looking at lightning flash density potential. So let's scroll through this on the day today. You can see the thunderstorm activity mainly across western Montana some of extreme eastern British Columbia, Alberta, Wyoming out there. Not much for Washington, but you could get a thunderstorm this afternoon or evening right along the Canada-Washington border. So heads up for that. And we scroll on in through Sunday. Let's see what is in store next. You can see that activity is pushing off to the east. Not expecting thunderstorms for Washington, Oregon, or British Columbia on the day on uh, Sunday. Now, taking a look at the composite reflectivity, this is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours or so. This is the North American high resolution model. Again, you can kind of see some stronger storms off across central and eastern Montana there in portions of Wyoming. Severe threat associated with that. And you can kind of see those showers popping off this afternoon. Again, right near the Washington Canada border. And we go on in through Sunday. Let's take a look. You can see that precipitation kicking off to the east. We start to get the ridge building here across the region. Now, total precipitation in inches. So this is the European model. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because you can see the big plume of moisture kind of streaming in here as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Big amounts. Vancouver Island northern tip there and portions of western British Columbia. 
once that makes its way further south, of course, much less, but it does show some measurable precipitation as we go through the day on maybe Wednesday afternoon through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Are we going to squeeze some precipitation out of this? It's very hard this time of year, but you see Seattle getting seven hundredths of an inch. And then we scroll through there and you don't see much for Portland there in the six day time frame upcoming. You see some for the Washington Cascades, Northwest Washington coast, better amounts the further north you go though. Now, two meter temperature anomaly. So uh, watch as we go on in through mon Monday and Tuesday. We're really going to warm things up here across the region unless, again, you're kind of north of Vancouver Island across western BC up towards southeast Alaska. But then as that system starts to make its way in here, you can kind of see we cool things back down some areas subtly below normal temperatures as we go. And then as we go through the end of the week, that next ridge starts to build in here. So we'll watch that over the next few days. So a national blend of models. This is today, Saturday, July 5th. You can see Seattle, mid 70s, some lower 80s for Western Oregon. We go through Sunday. We warm things up a bit tomorrow. A fairly nice day occur here across much of the area. But as we go through Monday, we start to get uh, you know a, a bit warmer here across the region. You see some mid 80s showing up. Look at Olympia and Kelso, Chehalis out there, Kelso down towards Portland, Willamette Valley, some 90 degree readings. You can get off towards the coastline there if you really want to cool things down, or maybe the Strait of Juan de Fuca. You can see the chillier temperatures out there as well. But look at the Seattle into the lower 80 southwest bc as well and east of the mountains starting to warm up quite dramatically trying to get back up to the upper 90s for some locations and then look by tuesday july 8th 103 105 degrees look at boise 100 some mid and upper 90s for eastern oregon cool things back down though as that system starts to move in on wednesday and you can see it suppress the temperatures by the time we get towards thursday july 10th across much of the area and then july 11th that's my daughter's birthday happy birthday amaya taking a look there at daily max two meter temperature we start to warm things back up as this next ridge tries to come in here but who knows how that is going to unfold we'll watch the strength of that coming up now taking a look at the next 15 days european ensemble mean look at this you can see the below normal signal but a very sharp cutoff there right across western british columbia but still below normal across much of oregon and washington some South Central British Columbia also. So yeah, Storm Track kind of pointed up here. It's been pretty persistent as we've gone through some of the spring and the summer months so far. Now, 6 to 10 day above normal there, July 10th through 14th. 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook above normal still kind of showing up here and that's because that storm track pointed up into western Canada and again we'll be watching that uh, on a more daily basis and give you a better picture as we get closer to it the 8 to 14 day something similar there as well in the areas below normal July 12th through 18th and if you want to go to the Patreon page you can help support the channel here it is free to join up and get my daily updates you can go to the community tab and send me some images and whatnot of what you're seeing out there um, uh, but yeah otherwise you can spend some of your hard-earned money here and support the channel if you like as well and i just want to drive home a point here a little bit um this system out here across texas that caused excessive flooding there, there's so much that goes on in the the weather community here when we've get when we get an event like this because we know that things can be better funded here and we can increase warnings for the public so it is very disheartening to see that we are still losing lives especially of young children kind of uh, you know out there we're, we're responsible as parents and whatnot and as a society of looking after these people. And it's frustrating when we do not properly fund our services here across the country. Obviously, the private sector has not stepped in to make these forecasts to, that would have saved lives yesterday. We should be funding the National Weather Service more versus less because it kind of seems to be a thing of where, you know, some politicians want to cut costs and then when the National Weather Service doesn't do well, they want to point fingers at the National Weather Service while not properly funding the National Weather Service and round and round we go. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm not, not going to pretend to know the political inner workings of why this is the case, but as a society, we do not fund the National Weather Service enough. That's my personal opinion here. You can disagree with me or whatnot here, but we are leaving lives on the table. You know, each event we lose lives here. You know, we need more people watching the weather, not less. We lost people in the, you know, the drowning incidents that cross Lake Tahoe here. We lose people every year uh, out across the coastal areas and in floods across Pacific Northwest and down trees and things like that. Because, you know, I don't think that we properly ed educate people enough. As a populace here, we are kind of on the lower side of knowledge across the USA as far as weather knowledge is concerned. And hopefully, 
um, my channel maybe helps out a little bit with that or at least allows people to be a little bit more aware of what is going on and the, some of the challenges the National Weather Service you know, takes. And if you guys think that private industry is the way to do it, well, let's see it. Let's have some private companies step up and start to put, put out these warnings and whatnot because they're not doing it and we're defunding our services that do. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox here and um, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.